If you call him Yahweh, you are in hell. If you call him El, as in El Shaddai, that's who he is. If you call him Yahshua, if you call him Jehovah, if you call him Abba, if you call him Lord, if you call him the Creator, if you call him the Light Source, I wish I had a witness here. If you call him your Savior, if you call him King, all of these are accurate. Why? Because they express an accurate picture of who he is. The Gospel of John, chapter number 10, I would that you would meet us at verse number 11. As we continue in these seven statements from Jesus, this is part number six of the series. And so John 10 and verse Number 11, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Now the hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. Here it is. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, talking about my life, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Ladies and gentlemen, with your prayers, I want to continue in this conversation. I am Jesus in his own words, and I simply want to talk about the good shepherd. On your way to your seat, tell somebody the good shepherd. Amen. The good shepherd. Throughout the course of world history, and in the realm of religion and spiritual discourse, There has always been a great deal of debate and subsequent division amongst people with respect to the various names of God. In other words, there are several labels and titles which some groups have deemed to be standard when referring to God. And so as broad as the spectrum of humanity is, as you can imagine, our opinions about God and who he is and how we express him, how we adore him, how we acknowledge him, just as vast as humanity is, so are the opinions about God. And so there are some who don't necessarily believe in God, but it's difficult for them to argue against the logic that everything must have a source. Y'all with me so far? 
those that claim to be atheists, those that would deem themselves unbelievers in God, even they find it difficult to argue against the very fact that everything, even scientifically, starts with an atom. Everything that has being must have a beginning. And so historically, that's where you get some people who give that vague reference to the creator. It's not very concrete, it's very vague, it's very ambiguous, but they acknowledge the fact that everything must have a source. That's where you get the terms mother nature and father time, a higher power, a supreme being. Why? Because that's their label, that's their distinction. And that's about as far as a whole lot of folk will go in acknowledging the existence of God. Y'all hold me. I'm going somewhere with this. Then you have the crowd that will recognize God by a specific name. And the basis of their assertion is rooted in some type of religion. In other words, if you're Muslim, you call him Allah. If you're Jewish or if you're Christian, there are dozens of names that we deem as acceptable. But tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the point of contention amongst world religions is when people argue for the use of one name versus other names. Here it is. Them folk that knock on your door early on Saturday morning, I won't call them by name, but that particular group, they are sticklers for using the name Jehovah. I wish I had some witnesses in here tonight. Like, you can't call him nothing else. That's his name. That's how they refer to him. And so if you were to bring up the name Jesus, there are also those who would demand that you say Yahweh or Yahshua. Hope y'all understand what I'm saying here. The purpose of this message is not to give you a history lesson. However, you do need to understand how God is viewed by other people. Because if you subscribe to some of these vague ideas about God, teach pastor, some of these ambiguous titles that people give to God, or if you argue for the use of just one title, you're going to miss out on the person and the power of who God really is. I'm teaching better then y'all helping me tonight. Uh, I need you to know I'm going the long way because you need to know as a believer there are hundreds of names uh, that you could call God uh, and all of them uh, would be accurate. I'm here to tell you if you call him Allah, you ain't no Muslim. You are accurate when you call him that. If you call him Yahweh, you are in order. If you call him El, as in El Shaddai, that's who he is. Uh, if you call him Yahshua, uh, if you call him Jehovah, if you call him Abba, if you call him Lord, if you call him the creator, if you call him the life source, I wish I had a witness here. If you call him your savior, if you call him king, all of these are accurate. Why? Because they express an accurate picture of who he is. Tell your neighbor, my daddy got a lot of names. <laughs> See? Understand this. When you read through the seven or eight I am statements of Christ, that's what I've been doing for the benefit of those who have not been here. He is not focused on the title. He is focused on the task at hand. Y'all feel what I'm saying here? It's not just a name, but rather it is the nature of God that the name signifies. So all them names that I listed and folk calling for God, Abba means father. That's not his name. That's his nature. Every name has a certain connotation that goes along with it. In other words, when we have looked at the statements that we've preached in the past few weeks, all of them give you a specific expression of God's personality. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. And tonight, I am the good shepherd. He is not in conflict. Jesus does not have an identity crisis. He's not saying, I got to choose either being bread or being light. He says, no, I am all of the above, depending on what your need is. 
Aren't you glad you serve a God who not only has what you need, talk to me, but he is what you need. He's not either or, he's both and. Some of you are sick tonight and you need a doctor. He says, I am that. But for those of us that are well, just keep on living because after a while you're going to need a doctor. Tonight you need a counselor. Tomorrow you may need a provider. Next week you may need somebody to come see you while you're in trouble. But thanks be to God. I ain't got to go to nobody extra. Tell your neighbor he's all there. And so, if indeed he's talking about his nature, then you can't get so hung up on the name that you dismiss the character of who he is. Like you're going to actually argue with folk about whether or not you call him Jehovah or not. I ain't got no issue with Jehovah. He that too. So them folk around the corner at the Kingdom Hall, they don't get to have a monopoly on the name Jehovah. If you go to a foreign country, you better know how to say another name because them folk over there don't speak no English. It's not just a classification. It is a characterization of who he is. And so in order to appreciate who Jesus is tonight, you really need to understand who you are in him. Next month, we're going to talk about who I am and who you are. But you need to understand who Jesus is so you can understand who you are. If Jesus is indeed the good shepherd, and I believe he is, it suggests that you and I are nothing more than sheep. Now, this is probably not the time for you to get uptight and get defensive and start, you know, getting, uh, get, getting all personal with it. I'm trying to tell you, you have no reason to be insulted. Don't shy away from it. The fact of the matter is, Jesus cannot be your shepherd if you ain't a sheep. Have I got a witness in here? If you shame to be a sheep or you feel like I'm talking down to you because I call you a sheep, how can you have a shepherd? You and the shepherd ain't on the same level. So what does it make you? It makes him the leader and me the follower. Talk to me here. It makes him supreme and it makes me submissive. It puts him in the power position. And the reason we need him there is because by nature, here's where you get uptight. We, like sheep, are both dumb and defenseless. Yeah, I felt the same way when the Lord said it to me. Listen, of all the domesticated animals, sheep are by far the dumbest. Not only are they the dumbest, but they're also the most Helpless. I told you this on Sunday. Sheep will spend their entire day grazing, eating, wandering around from place to place and won't never look up. And as a result of them not looking up, guess what? They become lost. How many times, I said it on Sunday, some of y'all missed it so I can ask you because you wasn't here. How many times have you looked around in your own life and said to yourself, how in the world did I get here? Somebody know what I'm talking about. You were just wandering around, eating what you wanted to eat, doing what you wanted to do, and you mess around and look around and you lost, can't find your way home. It's because you were not paying attention to the consequences of your wandering. Sheep have no home instinct. Sheep have no idea where they are going. Even when they get lost, they still don't know how to find their way back. I'm talking to the person in here who knows you lost but don't know how to get out. I wonder if I got some folk in here that's ever had a situation. Oh, I know I'm lost. I just don't know how to get back to where I'm supposed to be. I know that I'm wrong, but I don't know how to get out of this thing. I know that I'm lost. I know that I'm broken. I know I need direction, but I don't know which way to go. Uh, have you ever got more lost trying to get yourself unlost? 
I wish I had an honest crowd in here. Have you ever messed up up worse than it, what it was when you first got started because you thought you were smart, because you thought you could manipulate, because you thought you could articulate your way out, and you find yourself tied up in the knot that you made, digging around in the mess that you made, stuck in the mud that you made of your life? Every now and then, a good sheep ought to admit, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, your plan to get out of debt, how'd that go for you? No, no, no. You, you had a plan. You, you, you started out, uh, what this is, July? You started out seven months ago. Your plan to lose weight, how'd that go for you? Come on, New Year's resolution. Come on. How, how'd that working out for you? Your plan to stop doing this or that. Your plan to move up in the world. Your plan to build your family. Your plan to get your children back on track. For a sheep to think that you can make it on your own, it is the spiritual equivalent of the blind leading the blind. Tell your neighbor, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. It's going to be good. When I study this thing in context, I learned something else about sheep that relates to us. I found out that sheep are totally incapable of finding their way to the sheepfold. Watch me now. Even if the sheepfold is right in front of them. I wouldn't believe it unless I studied it for myself. I told you Sunday, the sheepfold is the kingdom of God. The sheepfold is the body of Christ. The sheepfold is the church. And with all these churches on every corner, people still don't make their way here, even though the, the, the church is in plain sight. How is it that we got churches on every corner in Tallahassee and folks still ain't saved? Folk live next. Go to the church! can hear devotion going on from their porch and still can't make their way to the church. You know why? Because they're sheep and sheep can see the sheepfold and still not know how to get there. Now before you start patting yourself on the back, because you here and you ain't like them other folk that's just looking at church from a distance, you need to know you didn't get here on your own. <laughs> I wish I had some help here tonight. There were some other places that you could have been. Fact about it, there's some other places you wanted to be. I wish I had some honest folk to hear. But when the shepherd called you by name, when the shepherd pulled you from where you was and brought you to where you are now, slapped somebody and tell, I didn't get here on my own, but I heard somebody calling my name. You didn't just wake up in the will of God. You ain't that smart. He had to lead you there. You didn't find the right answer on your own. I don't care how much you read the Bible. I don't care how much you pray. I'm telling you that it is the shepherd that calls sheep from where they are. So you know what? For those of you who have not quite made it to where you want to be, God said, just keep listening to my voice. I can't see where I'm going, but I'm following the voice. I wish I had some help in here. I don't know how this thing going to turn out, but tell somebody, I'm following the voice. He called me by name. I've heard the voice of God. I may not be able to see it, but if I keep following, if I keep trusting, tell somebody, I'm going to get there. So, that's why you got to know who your shepherd is. Because if you're following people, well, unfortunately, those people are just as lost as you. I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, people don't mean you no harm. They're doing the best they can. But I'm telling you, sheep can't lead sheep. Even, even when it comes to church membership, you better look higher than this pulpit. Because if I'm not following the shepherd, I can't lead you. I need the Lord just like you do. I got to pray to him just like you do. So you got to trust that the under shepherd, that's the proper name for your pastor, the under shepherd, if he's following the good shepherd, then the church will never get steered in the wrong direction because you follow me as I follow Christ. 
Did you know that if the lead sheep steps off a cliff, the others ain't got sense enough to go a different way? I ain't talking about you, I'm talking about sheep. I'm talking about sheep will see somebody go over the cliff. Sheep will see that head sheep go over the cliff, and them rascals ain't got sense enough to go another way. That's how it is with some people in our lives. Because we give them way too much attention, God help me, and way too much authority in our lives. You better learn how to follow the voice of God so that he will lead you in the right direction. So that he will be able to keep you from falling off. But sometimes we fall off because we follow the wrong folk. How, how a broke person going to give you financial advice? They just borrowed $100 from you two months ago. Now they the expert because they paid one bill on time, and now you're going to let them give you advice? Let me get away from that before I say something else. Listen, when I say that sheep are dumb and defenseless, I'm telling you that sheep are easily susceptible to injuries and utterly helpless against predators so you know what if a wolf ever gets into the pen you gotta you gotta picture this thing i'm talking about a group of sheep if a wolf ever gets into the pen a sheep won't even defend itself see i know some sheep around here that carry switchblades and stuff so so I wish a wolf would. <laughs> Shucks, I wish I ain't all the way delivered yet. I'm still half goat and half sheep, but please understand, I'm talking about a sheep by nature won't defend itself. Sheep won't try to run away. They won't try to spread out. The sheep just huddle together in a big old group, and it's like a buffet. It's like lamb chops for the wolf. And watch this. I'm just t- telling you about sheep. If a sheep falls into moving water, they'll drown to death. Sheep are naturally afraid of moving water. And so if they were to ever fall into a body of moving water, even if it's just a stream, even if it's just shallow water, they will still drown because they are just that fearful of the water moving. That's why David said that the Lord is my shepherd. And what does your shepherd do for you? He leadeth me beside still waters. David understood the shepherd's culture. David understood the people he was talking to. The Lord ain't going to put you in a position that will put you in danger. The Lord ain't going to have you somewhere and not take care of you if God hooks me up it's going to be green pastures I wish I had some help in here if God is going to feed me it's going to be a buffet of blessings is there anybody here been with your shepherd long enough to know that he will take care of you and so as a sheep I'm just about there how y'all enjoying yourselves here As a sheep, I am totally dependent on Jesus. Can't make it on my own. Can't make decisions on my own. Don't know if I'm coming or going. Don't know if I'm going to the left or to the right or keep straight. God is my total source of everything in life. He don't just have what I need. He is what I need. I'm telling you, I'm totally dependent on him. He cares for me. He is compassionate toward me. And and I wasn't going to go here, but when I read through the text, I realized that I had missed something, so I'm going to give it to you now. I have the kind of shepherd that will deal with sheep that don't nobody else want. It's right there in the text. I'm not making this up. Because Jesus said to them, he says, I have sheep that you don't know about. Who was he talking to? He was talking to those Jews who only thought God was for them. 
But when he says, I'm the good shepherd, he says, I'm getting ready to reach beyond the walls of the church, beyond the walls of the synagogue, beyond those who know every scripture, beyond those who got a title, beyond those that got money, beyond those that live in a certain neighborhood. He said, I'm going to Holton Street to find some sheep. I'm going to Kissimmee to find some sheep. I wish I had some witnesses there. He said, I'm going down to the drug trap to get me some sheep. He said, I'm looking places that don't nobody else want to walk in to it. He said, I'm going all the way from Ox Bottom to Coom Bottom. Aren't you glad that Jesus reached? That's all I got to ask you. Aren't you glad he reached? And when he reached for you, he didn't reach on the top shelf. I wish I had some honest folk here. He didn't reach in the middle shelf. No, if he have to reach where? He reached and scrapped the bottom. He went from the uttermost to the guttermost. And he reached way down and took me just like I was. I'm glad he got some sheep that other folk don't want to fool with. So if you a sheep on drugs, God said, come on. Don't worry, church folk ain't going to shout off of this, but there's an addict in here right now that's struggling, and you need to know he's reaching for you right now. Uh, if you are a sheep and you made some mistake, he's reaching for you. Uh, if you are a sheep and you got folk that have thrown you away, he said, don't worry about it. They threw you down so I can pick you up. Uh, is there anybody here that has ever struggled, uh, that has ever been bottom shelf, uh, that has ever felt so unworthy and like, God, why do you even love me? God, why do you even deal with me? He said, I I knew who you was when I made you. I knew who you was when I called you. Tell somebody, my daddy loved me. I'm about ready to close here. I say I'm about ready to close here. But I need you to understand the depth of this relationship. When you know who your shepherd is, I don't care where you are, and I don't care who you in the midst of. When you know who your shepherd is, you can maintain intimacy in spite of your environment. <laughs> it's going to help you. I said you can maintain intimacy in spite of your environment. Let me teach before I preach and we can shut it down. In the Middle East, in Middle Eastern culture, there are many different shepherds that have their own flocks. So if you can imagine the brethren, all of them got their different groups of sheep. All of them have their own flocks. All of them have their own grouping. And so what they'll do every now and then is in the middle of the day, they will all meet in the middle of town. And while the brothers did their business, they would have their sheep there and they would all store them in the same area. Y'all see where I'm going with this? But what happened when the shepherds got ready to leave? There was a certain way and a certain call they would use to gather the ones that belonged to them. So it didn't matter how many different kinds of sheep, didn't matter who they belonged to. When that sheep heard their shepherd's call, it didn't matter what was going on in the environment. They were able to hear from their shepherd. Come in. God says there's some things that he's calling you out of. And you got to know his voice no matter what's going on in your environment. God is calling you out of the crowd. God is calling you to some stuff that other folk just ain't into doing right now. I'm telling you, it's going to be obvious in just a little while who you belong to. Because the stuff God is saying to you. He ain't saying it to the folk uh, that are in the general population. I wish I had a witness in here. God says, I'm calling you out. Uh, you may work with them folk, uh, but they don't have your shepherd. Uh, we may look alike, uh, but everybody your color ain't your kind. I wish I had a witness here. You've been hanging out uh, in general population too long, uh, but God has put out a call for somebody. We're the ones that feel a call uh, on your life. Uh, it ain't gotta be a call to preach. Uh, it ain't gotta be a call to sing. Uh, it ain't got to be a call to run that office. But God said, I'm calling you out of the crowd because I got something for you to do. Look here. That old song said, when he calls me, 
I will answer. Just like your mama when the street light came on. See, 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 see how some folk just got quiet right there? Because you wasn't raised in that kind of family. You ain't had that kind of neighborhood. But the street light was your curfew. I, I don't care how cool you think you are. When your mama call you, you be out there trying to act like you grown. Trying to make like you can do what you want. I ain't got no curfew. I can stay out longer than I want to. And as soon as you hear your mama name, even your friends tell you, your mama calling you. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? The shepherd calls you by name and he leads you in the safety of his love. I'm just about there. There's a song from back in the day. And it says that the safest place in the whole wide world, yeah, is in the will of God. He said the devil's loose in all the world. But wherever you may be, if God says go, you got to learn how to go where he leads you. I'm talking about the devil got wolves. I'm closing. The devil got dogs. The devil got foxes and a whole lot of other predators. But if you want to be safe, if you want to be in the will of God, you got to learn how to follow the good shepherd. The fact that he says, I am the good shepherd, it suggests that there are some bad shepherds. What's a bad shepherd? A bad shepherd is what Jesus calls a hireling. What's a hireling? Well, the root word is hire. That means someone who's only concerned about wages. Only concerned about profit. Only concerned about themselves. And when the wolf come, the hireling ain't nowhere to be found. You're going to find out who really cares about you when trouble jump off in your life. I'm trying to help somebody. You're going to find out who's really on your side when you got wolves surrounding you. You're going to find out who you can count on when that list of people starts to run real low. Jesus said, you don't need to fool with no hirelings. You don't need to fool with folk that only stay around when it benefits them. Will only be there for you if they can get some wool off of you. I wish I had some help in here. You don't need a hireling. You need a good shepherd. I'm going to cut across the field here because as a church, we got to learn how to look out for folk who can't do nothing for us. I, I, I'm going to wait a couple of weeks before I really get into it. I want to make sure that it's my words and I mean God's words and not just what I think about stuff because I do have opinions about stuff. But I can tell you safely tonight that as a church, we have got to be concerned and do for people who can't do nothing back for us. The least of these. You got to be the church that is known for helping them. These defenseless elderly people, somebody got to fight for them. We don't need no hirelings with their hands out talking about how much you're going to pay me. We don't need them kind of folk in ministry. These children, somebody got to fight for them. These poor people, these homeless people, these struggling people, these disenfranchised people, when things get difficult, this ain't no time to run. That ain't no time to be playing politics. That's the time when the real shepherd got to step up to the plate. Jesus says... I am the good shepherd. I can close now. He says, I know them and they know me. And if you want to figure out what separates Jesus from any other religious figure, all these great men that did great things, all of these different people that you consider to be great, what separates Jesus from all of them is that he is the only one who was willing to lay down his life for the sheep. You know I'm on my way to Calvary. So somebody ought to get warm real quick. I'm talking about all the great women and all the great men of history. They all died for something. 
They died for the movement. They died for the cause. They died for the betterment of future generations. They understood. Dr. King said, I may not live to get there with you. I may not see it with you, but I've looked over and I'm willing to lay down my life if it means my children and my grandchildren can get there. But by their willingness to die, they could only hope that their death would make a difference. But when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, he's talking about a relationship, watch me now, that is sacrificial and substitutional. If you didn't know that word before, you need to write it down. I said substitutional. Can I break it down so we can go? Listen, Martin Luther King died for our civil rights. His death was sacrificial. Our foreparents died for us to read and write and, and go cast our vote without apprehension. But when I tell you that Jesus died for you, I need you to understand Jesus died for you. Dr. King, Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, all of them died for you. John Lewis, every time he stand up, he tell that same story. He took a rock upside the head on that bridge for you. But when I tell you that Jesus died for you, I'm not just saying he died for you. I'm saying he died for you. Y'all ain't feeling me. I'm talking about a substitutional death. In other words, he died in my place. Yes, sir. He said, get out of the way. I got this. That's why Paul said that he became sin, that knew no sin, so that we who are sinners can be made the righteousness of God. I'm talking about propitiation. I'm talking about a vicarious death. I'm talking about a sacrificial and a substitutionary death. He didn't just die for you. He died for you. Is there anybody here that can get glad? Because he died for you. I believe there's some folk that love you enough that they will die for you sacrificially. I believe if somebody messed with you, somebody would jump in and try to help you. If they lose their life trying to help you, they die sacrificially. But when I talk about the power of the cross, and when I talk about the one who says, I am the good shepherd. I'm talking about the one that not only died sacrificially, but I'm talking about the one, yeah, who died substitutionally. Yeah, in other words, uh, he was wounded uh, for my transgressions. Yeah, he was bruised uh, for my iniquities. <laughs> And uh, he not only died, uh, yeah, for my sins, uh, but uh, he died in place of me uh, to redeem me from my sins. Uh, so what if I told you uh, that you were supposed to die uh, because of your sins? Uh, you were supposed to die uh, because of your wrongdoings. Uh, but the good shepherd, uh, he loved you enough uh, and said, move out of the way I'm going to die for you and I'm going to die in your place he died for you and for me and I heard him say that my death is voluntary because he said if I got the power to lay it down I also got the power to pick it up again when Dr. King died, uh, somebody took his life. When Malcolm X died, uh, somebody took his life. Uh, but one Friday uh, on Calvary's cross, uh, he laid it down uh, for you and for me. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that knows the good shepherd? Uh, he gave his life uh, for the sins of the world uh, I heard Jesus uh, say on the cross uh, he said no man uh, can take my life uh, he said I lay it down uh, and if I got power uh, to lay it down uh, if you give me three days uh, I can raise it up again uh, 
stayed there all day Friday and all Friday nights stay there all day Saturday and all Saturday night but look at somebody that know the good shepherd tell them about your shepherd tell them he laid it down but right in Sunday morning uh, he got up uh, yes he did uh, I said he got up uh, out of the grave uh, said all oh, power uh, is in my hand uh, I got power uh, power to protect you uh, I got power uh, power to provide for you uh, is there anybody here uh, that know the good shepherd uh, is there anybody here uh, got Jesus on your side uh, do you know him have you tried him uh, ain't he all right uh, ain't he all right uh, say yes yes uh, yes uh, 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 